Okay, one more fishing perspective. Buddy Stanley, who spent 31 years as a regulator working for TCEQ, Texas Water Commission, probably when you started, and he retired from all that regulatory stuff, but he is still the the uh, president of the Coastal Bend Bays Foundation, doing a real good job there. If any of y'all are not members of the Coastal Bend Bays Foundation back there next to that, the sign, certainly join up. They have monthly coastal issues forums, which was the seed for getting this thing started uh, about eight months ago or seven months ago. So uh, we could certainly use everybody's participation and membership. But he is first and foremost a fisherman. Buddy Stanley. Thank you, John. Uh, what you see here is the table set for a good fishing day. Um, you can see that there's a little bit of current on the, uh, a fair amount of current actually, on the left side of that weed line. And then this is the, uh, the back side of that weed line. Next slide, please. You can control it there if you want to. All right. Which button? It's on the top left and right. And then there's a spotlight in the middle. All right. Okay, offshore fishing structure. You have rigs, rocks, reefs, wrecks, rips, weed lines, weed pods, and then various flotsam and jetsam. I went the wrong way. Maybe Ruben gets to get Ruben, hit enter. Okay. Weed lines. Weed lines are the result of sargassum weed and a rip or countercurrent flows and water temperature differences in the wind. All those things can produce a weed line. And weed lines that are formed well and have some visible current almost always hold fish. Uh, you may not catch fish the minute you get on it, but if you stay with it, sooner or later, more than likely, you're going to have a bite happen. Small bait fish take refuge under the weed and in the weed. Uh, Tom uh, mentioned that. And can be any number of bait fish, and I just included a, a, a very few. Flying fish, chicken dolphin, blue runners, and that's just to name a few. The, it starts out smaller than that and, and works up, okay? And it really doesn't get much better than this if you're looking for a weed line. Uh, this is what most fishermen uh, just love to find, uh, especially when you're by yourself and you don't see any other boats. You do another one? And typically what you're after when you're out in blue water like that are blue water pelagics, dorado, wahoo, tuna of all types, white marlin, blue marlin, and sailfish. They love to eat around weed lines. Early spring and summer, if you try to intercept a loop current coming from the south, and it's uh, generally southeast of Fort A, uh, you have a good chance uh, of hitting a weed line. And the feeling of going out in the wild blue yonder and, and trying to hit one of these, uh, it's just an adventure. Uh, the other structure, is a lot of it's stationary, and uh, when you find something like this, it's, it's really exciting. And if you're lucky enough, uh, early in the year, they're typically filled with wahoo of all sizes, with an excellent table fare as well as some Dorado and possibly a billfish or a tuna. Now sea surface temperature charts will sometimes reveal the locations of weed lines and we review those um, because those sudden temperature changes indicate a, um, a current and possibly a weed line. Now after uh, the information that Ian gave, I'm gonna start looking at some satellite imagery and seeing if I can integrate that into uh, trip planning as well. Okay. Okay, when, you want, when you're gonna fish uh, a weed line, generally you wanna stay close to the line. Usually there is 
that temperature change and occasionally you can find uh, fish either side of the line but normally one side is cleaner than the other that means tighter and you're trolling and it's just much easier to fish on the cleaner side now sargasm I mean I love it like Nick uh, but it, it has to be sort of in the right form for me to really love it real well when it's really abundant and scattered it is extremely tough to troll and fish for pelagics. Um, catching weed often and unfouling hooks is commonly called bailing hay offshore. <laughs> and you can get mad at your captain uh, big time. It's like, when are we going to get out of this weed? You know, I mean, it's just horrible. Find me a clean spot, you know. I mean, there's times you have to run to uh, uh, find an area that you can even troll. And that's typically uh, in times of uh, minimal current. Okay, when you're working the line, this is an example of working it. You've got a, a Fort Rigger line going over here and that's back and it's close to the weed. You've got a, a flat line here and at the top here, you can see a, a shotgun uh, that's running off and that runs way back and then you have the same setup as you have over there on the starboard side of the boat and that's you can catch fish uh, further from the weed line um, but it's hard not to stay close that's that's a lot of times where you catch big dolphin next week and, when, and these are observations. I'm, I'm not an oceanographer. Uh, but you will see various stages of weed and weed lines when you're searching for a bite out there. And you may pass an area, and you may know that you have a full moon or you, or you have a strong current. And there's actually there's certain areas uh, that typically um, have weed lines form in them. Like you get in the from around in the 20s to around uh, the mid 30s and that's just rip zone uh, most of the time. Now that's a little in tight for some uh, marlin fishing but it does happen and you can catch them there. Some of the weed lines are, are formed tight. Those are the ones you really, really like and those with current you like the best. And what is really cool, and what I heard earlier, is that some of that weed sinks. And when you're on one of these weed lines that has all this current, you can see weed both at the surface and at depth. I mean, and, and the water's really clear out there, so you can see weed way down there. I mean, half the time you think it's a fish or something if you're looking, but um, it's, it's really neat to, uh, to see. It's very dynamic. Now some of the weed that you see is bright gold and some usually nearer shore is brown. And I would think that that means that the weed's just getting older and maybe it's fixing to, to give up the ghost. But the, the really bright, pretty stuff uh, is typically further offshore from my observation. Next please. And weed lines will keep you on your feet expecting to strike. Now this is, we typically use uh, medium tackle, uh, medium offshore tackle for being, you know, 60, 70 miles out. This is a 50 pound class uh, tackle. This is not sargassum. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. It was all things sargassum and I, I just, I couldn't help myself. But in 2005, uh, this guy was out there and we were going, what the hell is that? Is it a, you know, a spaceman's golf ball, a tee off, or, or what is it? How many people out here saw that in this area and know what it is? Yo. All right. There's a few observant people. It's a, I live in Portland. It was in Eagle's side. I didn't see it. Okay. What is it? Let's look at the next slide. Well, it's radial, and it left here, uh, as you can see, 
in January of 06, and it went 1,500 miles from Corpus to Hawaii uh, along the, on that vessel, the, the Blue Marlin. Next, please. And it went there for minor modifications, and ultimately its home port is going to be in Adak, Alaska on the Aleutians. And the thing only cost $900 million, <laughs> but it has a radar so powerful that you can send a golf or a baseball or a softball, whatever it says there, up into, it's a baseball, even smaller than a softball, launched into space from the the D.C. area, and then in San Francisco, you can tell the size and the rotation of it from this powerful radar. And that's protecting us from uh, missiles and allowing us to uh, take uh, countermeasures. Next, please. Okay, back to fishing. We're hooked up. And when we're hooked up, you never know what it's going to be, and let's see what this fish is here. That's a white marlin, and that they're a beautiful fish. They don't get uh, extremely large. Um, a really big one is uh, pushing a uh, hundred pounds. Most of them are, are much less than that, somewhere in the fifties. A solid fish, and maybe seventy-five. Next. And this is a cow dorado, and that's another thing that's uh, fairly typical. <coughs> Uh, along weed line fishing. Next, please. And this is the Bull Dorado. And uh, sorry for the uh, little bit of red stuff there, but uh, those guys are notorious for trashing a boat. You can get one of those in a boat, and you're going to have blood places that you would never, ever expect to find it. Okay, this is a Wahoo. Uh, not a very big wahoo. They get much bigger than that, well over 100 pounds. But this uh, happened to be one of the only pictures I had of a wahoo. They're a beautiful fish. He's been in the ice chest for a while. We're on the way in. And typically they have stripes down the side. And they are absolutely a gorgeous fish. Next, please. And here's a sailfish. And he's in his brown mode. Now these guys have uh, iridescent uh, skin, and when they get excited, now I don't know why he's not excited, I guess he knows we're going to release him, but um, <laughs> typically when they're excited they light up, and it's really uh, an awesome sight. Next please. Now here's eye to eye with a, uh, a white marlin, and we treat these guys with TLC. And here's another white. Now here you can see an example of them lighting up. All billfish that I know of have this capability. And here's a rat blue marlin on the leader. Small blue marlin we call rat blues, but you can tell he's got some he's got a little bit of a weight to him just because of his uh, his back there. Next please. And never give up is our motto when you're on a weed line. Never give up. Because when you're in the middle of nowhere out there and you've, uh, you've got these rigs and rocks and all these other structures that are other places, but when you go for it and you search for a weed line out there and you find one, you better stay with it because you ain't got nothing else. <laughs> okay, green water weed line. Uh, the near shore green water weed lines will hold bait and predators like kingfish, tarpon, triple fish, and ling, and others. And the scattered weed, the weed pod, the same weed pods that get close to the beach that Nick was fishing, these will hold fish as well just offshore. Next, please. And they will hold fish uh, like tarpon. Uh, this was last year. Uh, this is about 150 pound tarpon that was released. And in this case, there was so much weed, we were uh, still fishing at this point, um, 
that a slug moved through that had to be close to a half acre or better wide, and there's absolutely no way that, that you could still fish it. And there's a jumper that was over there. Okay? And here is a thermometer, uh, a kingfish. They're known to uh, have a fish advisory on them for mercury. However, I still eat them. And after 14 I learned how to smoke fish when I was up in Alaska on the Exxon Valdez, and uh, they are excellent smoke. And you can eat them other ways too, and they're still good. Next, please. Okay. We clip off tons of shark, especially when we are tarpon fishing. And we use circle hooks, and we clip them off, and we don't eat them that often. This particular shot, I had someone down uh, from Austin that said, man, I want that, you know, I mean, it's, he saw all the meat there. Plus, it had one of my good lures in it, and it was caught on 25-pound test, and it was declared meat. <laughs> so that one turned into a uh, black, black and black tip. And that's my dog's head there. He uh, loves to fish. And that ends it in IDOs. And as we say in offshore fishing, we'll uh, see you on the rip. <laughs>